Having a protein shake after your workout is a very good idea. During weight training, muscle protein breaks down briefly in a catabolic phase, which then triggers the recovery of muscle. As the muscle recovers and incorporates new proteins, it enters an anabolic phase. Now, for simplicity here, we will equate anabolic with muscle building. Now, adding 6 to 10 grams of essential amino acids to your post-workout whey protein shake can increase the anabolic effect of your protein shake up to six-fold, according to a study published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. Now, they base this finding on total anabolic response or net protein balance, which is determined as whole body protein synthesis minus the breakdown. The researchers used uh, muscle biopsies and blood tests to validate their findings in a very well-designed study, I must say. So this was really a very quite elaborate study with extremely committed participants. If several blood draws per day are not bad enough, um, a muscle biopsy is essentially jamming a sharp hollow point big needle into your thigh and ripping out a piece of muscle tissue. So these participants must have been extremely motivated. The benefits of essential amino acids or branch chain amino acids, so BCAAs by themselves, is continuously debated. Most videos that you will watch on YouTube about this topic will tell you that they're a waste of money. And one downfall of these amino acids is that they're used up in a very short time frame. And so if you consume them throughout the day, they haven't really shown to improve muscle protein synthesis very much. Um, most of these studies looked at using these by themselves. But adding them to a whey protein isolate shake after a workout and only then, um, it this can actually have a much more profound effect. Essential amino acids cannot be produced by the body. They are primarily, primarily responsible for the stimulation of muscle protein synthesis. So there are nine essential amino acids. There are valine, leucine, and isoleucine, which are also called the branched chain amino acids, or BCAAs. And then uh, phenylalanine, tryptophan, lysine, histidine, methionine, and threonine. So an essential amino acid supplement contains all these nine, uh, all nine of these amino acids in a free form. And in sufficient concentrations, these essential amino acids activate the mTOR C1 pathway, stimulating protein synthesis and cell growth. To do this in an effective manner, however, they need to have enough building blocks to accomplish this anabolic response. And this is where the whey protein isolate comes in. So this is a complete protein, which also contains, of course, the essential amino acids, but also non-essential amino acids. And it's usually in like peptide form. These are larger you know, uh, amino acid chains together in peptides or, or whole proteins, right? And they get digested and broken down over a certain period of time to be available as building blocks then. So um, together with the um, uh, free essential amino acids. So this provides an environment for optimal muscle building after sufficient stimulation from a workout. So one issue with essential amino acids is, unfortunately, that they taste terrible. And I initially made the mistake to buy a non-flavored powdered form of um, essential amino acids. It's this one here. And I'm not, you know, hating on this company or this product. They all taste bad. It's just essential to them. So this is just something that is not flavored. It's just very, very basic, um, you know, essential amino acids in powdered form without anything else added. <clears throat> and while I like that there's nothing else in there, so you don't have any sweeteners or, or any colorings, or any food colors, anything else in there, the taste is horrific. So the first mistake I made was, was adding this to my regular whey protein shake, and it was just not drinkable. <laughs> it's just horrible. So then I figured out I can still use this, um, even though in, in the meantime, I bought a different product, but I can make this sort of palpable if I add some lemon juice and stevia to it. And then what I'll do is I have my whey protein shake and I have you know, my cup with this stuff in there with the lemon juice. And I sort of drink them, you know, uh, simultaneously. And I think that kind of makes sense to me that that worked out fine. And you only do this really one time. I have about two to three protein shakes a day, but I only have the essential amino acids right after my workout. So with the protein shake right after my workout, right? So the stevia, of course, helped a bit. Um, and this kind of made it a bit more, you know, I mean, usable, I would say. So I would really recommend to get either a flavored essential amino acid supplement powder. Unfortunately, then you will have probably an artificial sweetener in there and possibly food coloring, which is not great, obviously, or essential amino acid capsules. But then you have to take quite a few because you want to get to these six to 10 grams. So this is another product here. And um, this is 
another option. So you have essential amino acids in capsule form, but you're gonna have to take about six of these capsules, right? Um, which is which is fine. And since it's only really, I would recommend this on days that you're working out. Let's say you work out four days a week and it's only one time a day instead of what they're recommending here, two to three times a day. This will you know go a very long way and they're not very expensive. So this brings to the point, keeping in mind that this is a financially very difficult time for many people, um, I can actually still justify adding this um, supplement to my daily foods because I do think that this has merit. I do think that this works. This makes a lot of sense. You get a lot more out of your protein shake. And uh, protein is expensive. There's no question about it, right? And getting whey protein is not necessarily cheaper than buying meat or eggs or all these other things. Many people, especially on YouTube, are promoting to get your entire daily protein need only from foods. I think it's difficult because the downside is that let's say you would get all your protein from, from meat, there will be a lot of fat, you know, or if you get it from other sources, there might be a lot of carbohydrates involved as well. So getting a protein powder, a whey protein powder, I think is a good idea because it cuts out a lot of these, you know, fats and, and carbs that you otherwise are consuming. And, you know, it's easy this way to get to your total daily protein need. Is it cheaper? Not necessarily, but it's easier, it's more convenient. Um, and then the other thing is how much do you absorb? Because you want to, you know, whatever you take in in protein, you actually want to use it. You don't want to take protein in and then just excrete it. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's too expensive for that. And this is where I think this um, essential amino acid addition comes in very, um, you know, successfully if it's in, in this protein shake right after your work. I think it makes actually then a really big uh, difference because it really enhances the absorption and increases the effect of this post-workout protein shake. So again, so I'm really trying to minimize what supplements I use. I only implement the ones that have shown efficacy. And also I try this out for myself because the downfall with many studies, unfortunately, is that um, this one was a very, very well-designed study, but you know there are certain studies where it's all based on questionnaires in the end and the honesty of participants, especially when it comes to nutritional studies. Also many times look at who is using the supplements. Sometimes it says, well, well-trained athletes. Sometimes it says uh, elderly women. So it always depends on who uses this, if this is applicable for you, if this is a group that's representative of who you are, right? Also, what are the goals? Are these endurance athletes? Are these athletes that do this for um, strength training? Are these athletes that do this for bodybuilding purposes? Don't know. In my opinion, <clears throat> the normal person working out, this like me not trying to be competitive anywhere, um, also, you know, especially when you're not on any uh, hormone supplementation, which I'm not taking either, I think our goal should always be to maximize muscle growth because as we get older, we lose muscle. There's no question about that. As soon as you turn 30, you know, every year you lose muscle. So you have to compensate for that. And I think we should really try to work out uh, in a safe manner with controlled repetitions, but taking weights that are heavy, that you got to make your body uncomfortable to have a response. Sometimes people ask, well, I'm concerned to start working out because I'm worried about getting too much muscle. You won't. It's just, you know, no. I mean, <clears throat> bodybuilders go through great lengths to achieve the bodies that they have. Of course, they add in steroids in the mix or large amounts of testosterone at least, which is, of course, a steroid hormone. But, you know, to get there um, just by regular working out to overdo it, you don't have to worry about that. I think it's very important to work out. I think it's very important to keep it safe. That means, you know, keeping... Um, yourself from getting injured. And that's where clean repetitions and all it really comes in. And then of course, regular workouts about four times a week. <clears throat> but then, you know, optimizing your results with a whey protein uh, powder supplement plus uh, essential amino acids makes a lot of sense. Um, there has been other studies that have been done just with leucine, which is a branch chain amino acids, also quite successful. I think this was the most convincing one to me. And it also makes sense that you want to have all the essential amino acids in free form together with your uh, protein shake, because that seems to really give you the best results. So hope this was helpful. Hope that's something that you might be able to implement. I would love to hear from you what you're using in terms of protein powders, supplements, when, especially when it comes to amino acid supplementation. So please subscribe and uh, leave a comment or question, and I will definitely look at those.